Logic Pro for iPad version 2.0.1 has just landed. And while well, according to the App Store, this is just a bug fix and stability update, if you dive into the release notes, there are some interesting and really useful changes. Diving straight in then with a massive fix that I know affected quite a lot of people. In the performance section, this update fixes an issue where Logic Pro could sometimes show unexpected disk is too slow messages when bouncing regions. Great to see that fixed. I know that was affecting quite a lot of people, so it's good that they got on top of that because there's nothing more annoying than a disk is too slow message. Under stability and reliability, the update resolves an issue where Logic Pro could hang sometimes when creating a region at the playhead position on a session player track during playback. This kind of sets the scene for a lot of the fixes here. Some of the issues that people have been having with the session players seem to have been taken care of as will become apparent as we go through a lot of these different bug fixes. Session players have a whole section to their self. This update resolves an issue where base session player regions that have been converted to MIDI could revert to session player regions again after saving and reopening the project. This exact thing happened to me yesterday. I was making a video on the session base player and yeah, I was very confused when reopening a project that the changes I made hadn't stuck. So great that that's been fixed. Session player regions now regenerate immediately when a core group is adjusted in the inspector, and the update resolves an issue in which the left hand of the session piano player might not play as expected with the current settings. And this update also resolves an issue in which adding a new session player region to a session bass track might unexpectedly create a drummer region. Haven't seen that myself, but I mean, it's good that it's been taken care of. Let me know down in the comments if you came across any of these bugs that have now been fixed. No need to let me know for the next one or two though, as yeah, these were biggies and it's great that they've been fixed. In the sound library and content section, the update fixes an issue where the sound library incorrectly shows four badges indicating uninstalled sound packs when everything is installed. Oh wow, this was confusing for myself and for a lot of people. I originally thought and recommended that people dive into the sound library and into the manage pack section because a couple of those packs needed updated after the Logic Pro 2.0 update. That didn't fix it. People were still dealing with this and you know, it's good that it's been fixed finally. When installing sound packs in cases where there is too little free space available, Logic Pro now shows the correct amount of needed space to complete the download. Another one that was really confusing for a lot of people. I'm glad that that's sorted now because yeah, that was a bit of an issue. In the plugin section, the update resolves an issue in Scripter that caused all program change events to be sent as program change zero. The studio bass instrument no longer outputs hiss when the hum and hiss slider is set to the lowest value. Again, this is something that I came across yesterday when making a video on this stuff. So I might have to go back and re-video, re-video, re-record that bit now that that fix is in place. And half sustained pedal positions now work as expected in the studio piano instrument. Good stuff. In the chord track, the loop key command now works on chord groups. And in automation, the cut time command now shifts track based automation correctly. Not something I've came across. Again, let me know in the comments if this is an issue that's affected you since the previous update. Bouncing a folder in place no longer places the bounce region one bar to the left of the original position. That sounds annoying. And in global tracks, the loop command now works on arrangement regions when the global tracks are displayed. And the cut cycle command now creates an undo step. So not a massive update. It takes care of a couple of really big issues that were affecting quite a lot of people. And there's some smaller fixes there as well. It's good to see Apple on the ball, which is kind of not really like them when it comes to Logic Pro for iPad updates. Will this mean that we'll start to see more smaller updates come more frequently? Ooh, who knows? Anyway, let me know down in the comments if this fixes any issues that you have been dealing with in Logic Pro for iPad. And if you found this video helpful, give that like button a good hard slap. I really appreciate it. For more info on every single update that Logic Pro for iPad has received since launch, 